praise God, praise God, praise God. Um, we're actually starting, uh, we ramping up to Easter. Um, um, so we're going to be in this, the series called Untrue. And, um, and why we call it untrue uh, is not that Easter is untrue, but um, it actually stems from a J.R. Tolkien quote. That um, uh, if you never watched the Lord of the Rings, there's a there's a scene when Sam realized Gandalf isn't dead, and he asks this question. He 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 actually makes this statement, uh, but he asks this question. He said, "Is everything sad going to become untrue?" And and like this is a question that, um, although you know J.R. Tolkien is a story and it's fantasy, and you know Lord of the Rings is is sometimes silly, uh, but um, there are some. There's a, um, a theme that's in there. There's this idea of someone coming from the grave and someone making things that made you sad, no longer sad. Um, um, we're going to be covering that in a couple of weeks. And um, I want to start off by this week talking about the unexpected, right? Um, I'm going to try to name most of the, the, the uh, sermons, starting with on uh, in it, and, and unpack something that hindering us from fully accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and fully living in the fullness of it. So uh, this week, we're going to be looking at his friend Lazarus' resurrection. And when Jesus actually makes this statement, um, I am the life and I'm the resurrection, we're going to unpack that. Um, But we're going to really unpack some things in our hearts. Because maybe you had an expectation that you had for God. Maybe there was a prayer that you prayed that you expected God to come in a certain way and it didn't happen. What do we do with that? Because that made you sad. So we're going to walk through some of this scripture in uh, John chapter 11. Um, um, probably won't cover all 45 verses I gave the, um, the people in the back, but we're going to cover a large chunk of it because I, I want you to see how this story unfolds. I want, to see, I, I want you to see the emotions behind it. Right? This is one of the most emotional stories. This is the place where it said Jesus wept. Right? It's, it's, it's so much emotion. It's so much attention. It's, it's streamed from the docile to the one that, that got the sassy attitude. We're going to talk about the sisters. Right? She came snapping at Jesus. Right? We want, we want, we want to talk about the attitude. We want to talk about the emotions and how God does amazing things in the unexpected. So I want to pray. I want to pray that uh, as we're going through this text and as, as we're going to, that someone might be drawn by their heart to Jesus Christ. That someone who actually feel like they're in a good position with God, that God will use these unexpected things in life to bubble up some things that need to get repented of and reconciled. Right? That's my hope for this sermon series. This is a hope for the sermon today. <laughs> Nevertheless, that God used the word of God to show us who we are. And in that, we might see the love of God and might be drawn to repentance. Right? So I'm going to pray now. I'm going to jump right into it. All right? Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, you are a good, good Father. God, we ask you to pray right now, God, as we're getting ready to jump into this text, God, that you lead and guide us to every single verse that has meaning. That the words on the page might step out and paint the picture of who you really are. That God, that our hearts would not be able to be stubborn with our own prepositions of what we think who you are. But the scripture might paint that picture and write that story. God, I'm actually praying that my brothers and sisters and myself, God, might be humble by the word of God. But yet our eyes might be enlightened to who you are. Understanding what you're doing in our lives and the beauty behind that. God, I'm praying for souls. But God, I'm praying for our souls too. That God, that you might revive us, turn us on, and put us in motion. Change the way that we worship. For your glory and your glory alone. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try to do a little bit of old school. Um, Cut the tablet off. I'm just going to read things because I'm in one chapter. So. I don't think. So, so we're going to start at v- verse 1. If you got your Bible, you know, we're going to read along. He said this, Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord 
oil and wiped his feet with her hair. Let's take a pause there. 11 verse 2 is something else. Why do you think the writer is telling us something that's going to happen in the future? It hasn't happened in the past. It's something that's going to happen in chapter 12. But the writer is saying, hey, I need you to pay attention of what's going to happen with this Mary chick. Because you might know her from this, but this is how she got there. See, you see, there's some greatness and there's some, some high points in your life that you want to live, but you have to go through some unexpected. That's why the songwriter said uh, he leads us in the valley of the shadow of death. Amen. It's unexpected. But it's how he shows comfort. Amen. And he conforms us to where he needs us to be. So that's an interesting thing. He said, Mary, who anointed the Lord or and wiped his feet with her hair. Who brother Lazarus ill? That's who we're talking about. That Lazarus. Right. That sister. But there's more than one sister. So the sisters sent him a letter. Sent him saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. Right. Come on, let's, let's, let's look at that text real quick because it said that he loves Lazarus. He's sick. He's in a problem. He's in a situation. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God. So that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Man, listen to this. There's some unexpected things that happen in your life that it's just for the glory. There's some things that you think God is messing up your life and God's saying, I'm just setting you up for a glorious impact. It's unexpected. So, let's talk about this, right? It says in verse 15, or verse 5, it says this. It says, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. You got to understand what, what John is doing here. John is setting up the relationship that he has with these people. All right. He loves them. He said it not once, but twice. Well, he on. loves these people. Come on. And they're sick. I don't know about you, but if Jesus made a public declaration that he loved me, if I told him I was in a situation, you would think he would clear his schedule and show up. Well, Don't you think that? Yeah. I'm letting you know that what Mary and Martha thought. Yeah. Right. That's what they thought. They thought. Because, man, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring it home. I'm going to bring it home. You think because you go to church and you worship God that when I pray, he going to do it. Well, come on. Oh, God. This is my friend. I know God. And God, I need you to do a miracle for me. You know, Lazarus is sick, and I know you love him. Come with that power. What the scripture says is in verse 6, it says, So when he heard Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer. <laughs> He stayed two days longer in the place where he was. See, everything that we think urgent, God don't think urgent. Everything that we feel like, God, I need you to move right now. He said, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Because God isn't a slave to time. Time is a slave to God. 
I don't know what you're waiting on in your life. I don't know what you're praying for. I don't know what deadline you have pressing, but maybe God just want to wait. How long did he wait? What scripture tells us is the distance where Jesus is and where they sent the letter. Uh, by the time Jesus got the letter, what happened have already happened. Because it took two days for the letter to get to him. So, <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna, what happened? Let's, let's get to it. This is such a great story. Um, and it's, it's so rich because it shows us his character. He says he stayed two days longer. Verse 7, he says this. Then after this, he said to his disciples. He stayed two days. He chilled. He had a, after this, after he stayed, after he waited, after he delayed, he said to his disciples. Let us go to Judea again. The, the disciples said to him, why buy? The Jews we're just now seeking to stone you. Are you going there again? See, you got to understand. Jesus said a whole bunch of stuff in John 8 that, that the people are mad. All right. and, and what his disciples said is, he said, we, we got to go back to the place where they just ran us out. A hostile environment. He said, are we going that again? And Jesus answered there and saying in verse 9, he said, are there not 12 hours in the day? Come on now, we're going to talk about this time thing because you need to, it's a revelation. He said, if anyone walks in the day and he does not stumble because he sees the light of the world. But if anyone walks in night and he stumbles because the light is not in him. Wow. After these things, he said to them, Why? What is he doing? He's setting up this ideal of timing. Right. He said, we got to move in the timing of God. We got to move when we have the light mm -hmm. present. He said, verse 11, he says, said to them, our friend Lazarus has fell asleep. But I go to wake him. So what's taking place is the letter comes. He waits two days. I just told you it take two days to get to where we need to go. He waits two days. In the two days that he waits, Lazarus has fell asleep. All right. I know what you're saying. This is a very poetic. What do he mean by this? This same thing his disciples said. They said this in verse 12. They said, and the disciples said to him, Lord, if he fell asleep, he will recover. If he's just sleeping, he get his rest, he's going to recover. Jesus need to clarify some things because we need to talk about our expectations here. He says, no, 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 no. Now, Jesus has spoke of his death, but they thought he meant resting and sleep. Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. I don't know about this, but some of us, we need to um, underline this. Lazarus has died. What? I'm confused. Why? Let's, we, we, I don't know about you, but he said in verse 4, this illness does not lead to death. But Lazarus is dead. I don't know about you, but maybe God spoke to you. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get this. I'm going to move this thing to you, and you now you don't have it. And you're like, what? I don't know. Did I hear that wrong? Did I hear what God was promising in the world? I'm letting you know. <laughs> Not only the sisters are unexpected, the disciples are unexpected. Right. Why? Why is this so critical? Because it's in the unexpected that the glory of God is manifested. Come on. Yes. You don't see the glory of God coming. It just hits you. So now Lazarus is dead. And, and you know what I'm saying? That's bad enough. You we, we stayed here for two days. Not a man is dead, Jesus. <laughs> Out here just laying up in the sun, <laughs> eating figs. <laughs> Not Lazarus dead. 
Why didn't we just leave right when we got the message? Why did we delay? This is what he said. He's going he gonna to take it to a whole nother level. Verse 15, he says this. And for your sake, I'm glad I was not there. I don't know about you, but, but I, know, I know some of you guys have been going to do life, and it's been just good. But, but can you imagine you praying to God, and you know God got the money to pay your rent, and he let you get evicted? <laughs> God, all I need, I'm only short. A couple of dollars. You send this letter and you hear that he's still out swiping his credit card with his friends. And you be like, don't you love me? <laughs> I'm telling you what the unexpected is. Because some of us are now getting angry. How you out there spending that money and you say you love me and you couldn't give me 250. <laughs> Thanks, Daddy, for that one. <laughs> Even his disciples were like, so he dead? But I'm glad. Why? I'm glad I didn't do it. I'm glad I didn't open that door that they prayed for. I'm glad they did get fired. I'm glad they did get diagnosed with that sickness. I'm glad. Why? So that you may believe. Man, listen to that. There are things in your life that God is saying, your family people... Your family members need to see you jacked up. So they may believe. Listen to this. We don't like the unexpected, but God can handle it. So he said, but let us go with him. Oh, boy, Thomas, I'm, I'm, I'm going to skip. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll be Thomas' confession of faith. He said, so Thomas, call twin, just the doubt in Thomas. Speak this bold statement of faith. He says to his fellow disciples, then let us go that we may die with him. Wow. Thomas is, you know, right. everybody talk about the, the doubting Thomas, but no one talk about the ride to die Thomas. All right. Okay. Right. He was like, let's go. Okay. If they killing him, he's going to kill me too. <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> you know, I'm from the, I'm from the hood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but yeah, he ride it down. He's like, let's go. Let's go. Everybody like, oh, man, he told me I'm not. Verse 17, let's keep going. Because I need to get to the, the meat of the story. He said, now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus was already in the tomb four days. Four days. Meaning that, listen, listen, when he read the note, he was like, Lazarus about to die. Let me chill. It's going to take me two days to get there. Man, listen to this. Listen to this. Some of you guys want God to come right now. What God is saying is that if I come right now, what's going to happen is going to happen. All right. But if I save you now, they're going to doubt. Come on. I'm going to make this get worse. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know about you. Like, but until you are sitting there and you packing up your boxes. And people know mm. Jesus ain't going to show up with that 250 an hour next. <laughs> but he actually now got y'all moving out. <laughs> or you came home, your stuff is already laid out. <laughs> Can you imagine what people were saying to Mary and Martha? We're going we're gonna to see what they said in a few minutes, but can you imagine what they're saying? How they get evicted and they Uncle Rich? Come on now. Come on, Sister Colton. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? He's like, did they uncle pull up in the Bentley? <laughs> Ain't he out here just giving out turkeys for Thanksgiving to everybody? <laughs> How did they get evicted? I know he loved them. Scandalous. But not only that, it's been four days since they kicked them out. 
Like, I'm talking to this, but death is a lot more serious. All right. It's in four days. It's all messed up now. So now, Jesus come to Bethany near Jerusalem about two miles off. So he's standing outside two miles off. Man, you got, you got to now understand this. Jesus come in town, but he don't come to the house. You know I'm messed up. You know everybody talking about it. And now you hanging two miles from the house? What's going on? Some of us, some of y'all already got attitude. Y'all like, y'all like, man, but I seen Jesus. I just gave him my two cents. We all know what sister you are. <laughs> We're gonna get to that sister. So you're two miles off. Verse 19. And many of the Jews come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. They house is full. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. She ain't mad. She big mad. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Martha heard Jesus here. She said, oh, man, I got to tell Jesus this bad news. Let me go help Jesus. See, you got you got you got you got to understand how our faith is sometimes. You know what I'm saying? You either a Martha in the unexpected or you a Mary. Okay, come on. All right. Break it down. Break it down. And I'm letting you know, a lot of us Marys. Come on. You know what I'm how do you know? You got to first get in the unexpected. Mm-hmm. Right? We're going to unpack Mary because you, you might be like, oh, Mary, Martha was Mary better than Mary. No, nah, they 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 both had some issues. But Martha heard it, and she said to herself, I got to go to the Lord. Well, she said, she, she get her, and Mary's still mad. She in the house. Martha go to Jesus. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you have been here, well, my brother will have not died. If you well, just came, the situation wouldn't have been better. The situation would have changed. We wouldn't be in this situation well, if you would have just came. She said that. She said it's hard, but now she follow up with a statement of faith. It's in 22. She says this in 22. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, well, God will give you. If you got a Bible, underline that. Whatever you ask for God. It's the reason why that's critical and why John asked that. Because Jesus is going to do something to indicate the gift of her faith in a few minutes. Whatever you ask God, I know God is going to give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise. In the resurrection on the last day, I, I, I like no own get a glorified body. I know God got a plan. I, I listen here, listen here, listen here. My, my mark is here. We know you got good theology. Martha's we lean to theology to try to rationalize it. That's right. Oh God. You know, uh, it's bad, but he going to fix it up in the last days. He going to redeem all things to himself. We rationalize with theology. Well, even though our theology is rack. <laughs> Why? Because sometimes you can have theology apart from God. This is why Jesus says this in verse 25 next. Why? Because he said, Theologically, we know that the resurrection, my brother, is going to rise. Jesus said, oh, ho, ho, hold up, woman. Me and your theology are one. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. Well, come on. Why? Because you can have some theology apart from God. You can have some rationalization outside of God. He had to clear it up. I am your theology. I am the way that you're thinking that you think God is going to work. I am that. But not only am I the resurrection, 
I'm life. I'm everything you need to function. You think it's air? It's Jesus. You think it's food? It's Jesus. That's why he said, I am the bread of life. Why? He's teaching us something about who he is in the essence of his being. I am the resurrection of life. Now, whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who believes in me huh, should never die. Do you believe this? This is a question that I, I, is, is everything in this unexpected thing, right? When things happen to you unexpected, can you say, God is life? Jesus is life. Right? Do you believe this? Because he has switched it on you to challenge your heart. God is life. God, you're enough. God, I'm mad that it happened, but you're enough. Do you believe this? And she said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ the Messiah, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Woo! That's a confession of faith. Martha got it. Woo! Shadow with Martha. We're going to talk about Martha a little bit because she didn't get it. See, sometimes we're so used to saying church things, okay, it sounds good, but we don't understand what we're saying. That's Martha here. We're going to unpack that in a few minutes. Right. Listen here. Saying Sunday school questions doesn't mean you have faith. Say that again. Why? Because you go to church and you know the right thing to say. You the Christ. I believe that you can do whatever you need to do. But when he started doing it, you like, hold up, hold up. You can't do that. <laughs> do you know who I am? We're going to unpack that. Verse 28, he said this. When she had said this she went and called her sister. She, you know what I'm saying? She had a mini revival. She called her sister right. and said in private. So, and so what she do is that she knows these people <laughs> got some type of opinion about Jesus. And she said, I don't want to make a scene. So she pulled her to the side and said, hey, the teacher here. And Jesus is asking you to come because he needs to talk to you before he show up. But this mom, this, this our girl Mary, when she heard it, she rose quickly. Well, Woo! she got up, rose quickly, and went to him. Why did Mary make a scene? Why'd she make a scene? Martha's trying to do everything quiet, and she knocking over pots and pans. <laughs> Listen here, verse 30, it says this. Now, Jesus was not yet coming to the village, but he was still in the place where Martha met him. So he's still about two miles away. But when she got up, when the Jews who was there with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary way, got up quickly and go out. They follow her. Why are you acting a fool? I, listen, listen, I'm not saying that your emotional state, you should not act the fool. But you know Jesus. You know that this dude is a loose cannon. He going to do what he want to do. I'm talking to y'all too. Like, you know your God is a loose cannon. Why you upset when he don't do it the way you want him to do it? So she gets up following and now they're following her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to reap there. They're just following her. Listen, listen here, right? You have unbelievers in your life watching you how you handle the unexpected. That's right. Are you leading them to Christ? Come on, Listen, it's not in that because she, she actually leading them to Christ, but she's messing up the, the, the whole purpose of it. Why? It's your attitude. How? Are you responding? She gets up. Now they're following her in the same attitude. 
verse 32. He said, now when Mary came to where Jesus was, she said to him, and she fell at his feet. Underline that. Why is that critical? Because when we started this chapter, it introduced us that this is the Mary who wiped his feet with her hair. Why was she wiping the feet? See, you see, you see, no one gives you that theological Sunday school lesson of why she got to wipe. What happens at this feet? Look what she said. She said, Lord, if you... She fell at the feet and she said, Lord, if you have been here, my, bro- my brother would have not died. Unlike Martha, she don't follow with a statement of faith. A man. If you was not here, this would never happen. He says this in verse 33. He said, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping. He was deeply moved in his spirit and was greatly troubled. This Greek word in this phrase means Jesus is angry. Why? Your attitude of how you are responding around other believers can make Jesus mad. He was angry. Why? What's going on here? I'm seeing how you got other people crying and everyone deeply moved. What's going on? He said this in 34. And he said, where have you laid him? They said, come. He said, come and see. Verse 35, he said, Jesus wept. Right? This verse is the shortest verse, but yet one of the most debated verses. Why? Because the question is, what is the emotional intent that Jesus reached? Why? Because everyone thinks crying is, you cry when you're sad. That's a given, right? But there's other reasons where you cry. You know that, right? There's other emotions that cause you to cry. Right? Have you ever laughed so hard that you start crying? No, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm give you the one that's, that's relevant to this, because I just told you he's angry. That, have you ever got so mad that you cried? Jesus is mad. How do we know that he's mad? We're going we're gonna to show the crazy part about it. Why? It's, it says he's angry between two emotional states, and I don't believe Jesus is bipolar. I don't think you can get mad, get sad, to get mad, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In a short period of time, right? I don't think Jesus is bipolar. But these are tears of a different emotion. It's not that he's sad. He was already glad. But now I'm upset has I'm playing out. Because I was supposed to roll in like the hero. But the people who supposed to be my supporting cast well. is messing up the story with their emotions. Right. Because they had it in their mind how I was going to do this and not willing to let me do it how I was going to do it. I don't know. Maybe you are in that situation that you got this way that you think this is how God's going to play out in my life. And when he don't, you now talking, I don't know, I don't know. See, this is why I don't do this no more. See, this is why I ain't going to church no more. You telling everybody in the household that? <laughs> and now they, they face this treatment. What's going on? He like, I thought we had a relationship. How do we know that this messed him up? Let's look at this in 36. I'm going to unpack this. I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to pull out the Greek and the Hebrew, but we're going to unpack this. So the Jews, who are the Jews here? These are the ones that came with them, right? right. They said, see how he loved him. Okay, he's crying. He, he's crying. He's crying. Now he loved him. And some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have 
kept this man from dying. Then it says this in 38. Don't you remember that phrase I just told you when it said he was deeply moved? Yes. That's anger. It says this again. Then Jesus deeply moved again. Why? Y'all now over here talking about, see, this man out here driving Bentleys, he can surely pay that 250 right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right? They, 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 and he's like, not only are y'all talking negative about me, but Mary, the person who should be in the house defending my integrity. The person who should have been like, don't say that about my Jesus. You don't know my Jesus. But nah, you were in the house having a pity party with your friends. When I'm expecting more. So I said, is Jesus mad that they're mourning? No. Is he mad that they're weeping? No. But he is mad how Mary is making this whole situation a hot mess. Where did she do this? At his feet. This is why it's critical. I don't know about you, but I'm going to get to a place at the end of it, hopefully, that I will say, some of us need to go wipe his feet with your hair. All right. There are some confessions that you've messed some some people, and just how you have embarrassed them in public, you got to worship him in public. How much? Very costly. The, the, what the Bible tells us is that when she opened up the box, they said, these are very expensive. Why? Because she knew she messed up bad. We're going to get to that. Let's, let's keep going, right? Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and the stone laid against it, uncover it, right? And Jesus said, take away the stone. Oh, girl, Sister Martha. Sister of the dead man, Martha, said to him, Lord, by this time, that would be an odor, but he been dead for four days. How did this woman just say it, that she believed I can do all things, and I'm saying move the stone, she said, oh, God, is messed up. You don't understand all the complications behind this now. Like, this is how I'm saying that sometimes you can have good theology and say Sunday school, but your faith ain't there. Right. Listen, this is the crazy part of that. Mary let us know that faith wasn't there. Martha did the Sunday school answer until she got to the moment of faith to let us know her faith really wasn't there. I'm telling you how God exposed us in the unrespected. Listen, listen to that. you can fool everybody, but you can't fool God. Why? Right. How did Jesus respond to them? Right? Look at verse 40. He says, and Jesus said to her, did I not tell you, woman? <laughs> I love this. I love how Jesus is so passionate about it. Did I not tell you? If you believe, you will see the glory of God. You don't believe. Do you believe? That's the question. Do you believe? Because if you believe, God's going to glorify in your life. It might not be how you expect it, but that's just who he is. He makes all things work together for those who love. It's going to work out. It might not work out how you was expecting it, but it's going to work out. He said, he said in the verse 41, so they took away the stone and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Why did he say this? Because Martha's theology said, I know that when you ask, because you're the Christ, and he knows you're struggling in that theology right now. I need to reinforce you I am who I say I am in your life. Because sometimes you, you can get to a point where you can say, I don't know if God going to move like that for me. He moved like that for them, but I don't know he, he want to do this for me. I, like, <laughs> Whatever you do, never get to the place of his cousin, John. Are you the one or should I look for another? <laughs> because this situation, these life things that's going on in my life, got me saying, are you really the one? 
He said, I'm going to reinforce you. He said, I thank you, Father, who have heard me. Verse 42, and I knew that you have always heard me. But I say this, on the count of who? The people standing around me. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not praying this prayer because I need to get approval. Come on, lad. Come on, man. I'm going to give y'all some good theology here, right? I'm not praying this prayer so you think I'm the second letter of the third person. I'm not praying that prayer like this. But they need help in their theology right now. They need help in their faith. I'm doing it for their account standing around me. That they may believe that you sent me. I know who I am. But they don't know. See, sometimes God do it unexpected because you got Sunday school answers, but you still don't know who you, you rocking with. You be like, yeah, God, my God is the, the king of a thousand hills. You know, you know, you be saying those verses. I'm a king child. You know that you be saying this stuff, rocking it. Then you say, unexpected. How your theology shaking out? How you bouncing your step? Because when we in the in the peaks of life, we our God is good. How you not believing? Oh man, that's sad. Cause my God could do it. But now when you in a situation, yeah. unexpectedly. And people, listen to this, listen to this. People have been watching you brag on him when your life was good. Right. Now they all show up when, now when you're depressed. Is he still good? Is he still able? Do you still feel love? Because he's saying, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Then when he has said these things, in verse 43, he cried out with a loud voice. Lazarus, come out. Verse 44, we've we got to wrap it up now. He said, the man who has died came out. His hands and feet were bound with linen stripes. And his face was wrapped with cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. See, see, you. <laughs> There's something that these people have done to all three of these kids. Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Right. They have put binds on Lazarus that Lazarus probably didn't even know. No, I'm saying? I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to be Lazarus in this story. But Lazarus is, is get a special place. All right. Why? Because there have been other resurrections in the Bible. But none like Lazarus. Nope. Come on. Because in Jewish theology, they believed on the fourth day the spirit has left the body. There ain't no way to bring it back. So now Lazarus has been there for how many days? Boy. And he said, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus, come out. <laughs> man, listen here, listen to this. Listen to this. The reason why I'm saying this is that, man, there are things in your life that God will let it get to a place where people say it's impossible to recover. Right. What happened in their life, there's no way God can recover it. And God said, do you know who you're rocking with? Yeah. Do you know that you are minds? And if, listen here. And if you're minds, nothing can snatch you out of my hand. Yeah. So what Jesus did here, he said, Dale, give me what you owe. Give me last words back. Listen here. Jesus is not in a battle with death. 
We're going to talk about this on Easter. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because bad theology would think you, have you thinking that Jesus is fighting the devil and death. Going round for round. Nah. He say, death, devil, you answer to me. All right. He said, I don't know who life you thought you had control of. Give me that back. Listen here, right? That should excite some of us because we feel that we have loved ones that, that have been lost. And we like, I don't know what God can do. But do you know who you're rocking with? All right. When God says, whoever your baby name is, come. I don't care what's got them bind up. I don't know. I don't care what mess they are caught up in or, or connected with. Let them go. When Jesus is ready, mm-hmm. he can free them. He can do amazing things. In verse 45, it says to that. And many of the Jews there who had came with Mary and seen what he did, believed. All right. See, see, I'm not trying to make you be bad, but let God do what he do. There are some people in your life that maybe you are messing it up right now. And I advise you not to mess it up because you don't want to make, make God angry. Right? But our God is slow to anger yeah. and wrath. Yeah. Yeah. He has grace in the point that if you would just repent right now, God, I messed this up. I was living the life. I was telling people I was living for Jesus, but then when things got hard, I went astray. That's grace. He said, if you come back to me, I'll make it better. Yeah. And not only that, I will save those that you was hanging with. That's the beauty of the gospel. Is that God says, I don't care what's in your life that I'm expected. I can use it. So how did this story end? <laughs> this saga end? A couple things take place, right? If you keep reading in verse 46, the people heard about what Jesus did, and they said, oh, sucky, sucky now. It's all messed up now. Why? Everybody about to believe in Jesus. We got to kill this sucker. Kill Jesus? Yeah, and Lazarus, too. <laughs> got to take both of them out. Why? Because Lazarus can't be walking around. <laughs> Can everybody know he was dead. Listen here. He was dead, dead, dead for real. Four days thinking. He was out of it. Now, everybody in the town knew it. Why? Jesus was two miles off, and, he, and they told him he'd been dead for four days. Right. Right. Everybody in the town know. Right? Now you see Lazarus at jewels, <laughs> picking grapes. <laughs> everybody like, hey, that Lazarus, yeah. He was there right, right there. But that Jesus, man, Jesus. Maybe he is the Messiah. That's right. The religious leaders, what the scriptures now goes on to say, that they went into the plot. Uh, yeah. We are moving to the death of Jesus now. Mm-hmm. They was already mad, mad at him. Listen here. Right? That's why they hit disciples didn't want to come back in the first place. Mm-hmm. Because he kept revealing who he was. And the people, the religious people did not like it. It, it goes on and it tells you that plot. And then in John chapter 12, the week of Jesus' death, it said, in the sixth day before the Passover, Jesus was there. He came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had risen from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him, to celebrate him. Martha served. Lazarus was one who was reclining with him at the table. Listen to this. Lazarus was just dead. Now he at the table with his foot set up, laughing at people. <laughs> like, ain't not that. Uh, listen here. Listen here. Listen again. God has a way to reset your life in a way that you will even look like what you've been through. Man. But the reason why I think the writer John wrote this in. Come on now, Jesus. I'm going to try to close it like you want me to. Listen here. Because once you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he do what? He prepares a table. (laughs) 
in the midst of your enemies so that you can recline back and chill with the shepherd. That's the God that we serve. But why he reclining back? What the scripture now goes on to say, he says, Mary, therefore, took a pound of essential ointment made from pure nair and the oil his feet and wiped it with her hair. And the house, which was filled with anger, which was filled with sorrow, was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. I don't know about you, but some of y'all need to go home and, and pour some perfume around because you've been too sour. You've been too negative. And everyone seeing you as the moping Mary, the weeping Mary, but no one knows you as the worshiping Mary. Go fix your house. Change your attitude when you go home. This is the grace of God. That God is saying, I want people to, when you show up and you do what you do, it's unexpected. I want you to change the atmosphere. So, we're going to continue in this series, and it's going to get better and better every week. But this is my hope, and this is my prayer. As we talk about this, is that, that God starts to move in your life. Yeah, some of us are firecrackers. It's okay. Personality. Some of us are markers. We just be saying stuff, don't even believe it. <laughs> because it sounds good. <laughs> right? But that unexpected is going to expose where you're really at. And believe it or not, those he loves is the one that he puts <laughs> through the fire. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why? Because my love everlasting and everlasting. That's something about the love of God. You know what I'm saying? That's how you know you love him, that when you start getting put in fires and things start falling off of you. Jesus is proud of you. Don't you know that boy Joe? He was proud of Joe. He was like, ah, let me tell you about Joe. <laughs> now put him through the fire. There are things in your life that God is saying, the reason why you're going through this is because I love you. It might not feel like love. It might not even feel green. But God is saying, trust me. (laughs) Because I love you. I will keep you. And if I keep you and I walk with you, there's nothing in this world can bring you so low that I can't restore you back to you. So my prayer for you is to know Christ. I'm not asking you to know the theology of Christ. Know the man. Know the man. And the only way you know the man is that you have to go through life with him. Every day. The highs and the lows. But he's the good shepherd. And he will be God and God. There's nowhere you can hide from him. Even if you made your best and dead in death, the son of God say, there you go. <laughs> well, I can never be separated from the love of God. It's my hope and my prayer, God, that you guys understand that love. And it's understand that tethering that he has for you. Right? So I want to pray a prayer of repentance. I want to pray for some of us are Mary's, some of us are Martha's, and some of us are just Lazarus. We just letting everybody just do whatever they want to do to us. <laughs> we just victims of the situation. But nevertheless, God loves all three the same. So I'm going to just pray as we're going through this. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we ask you to just come to your throne. God, just looking for you. God, we ask you to pray right now, God, for my brothers and sisters, God, because it's in our hearts, God, that, God, we just want to please you. 
God, we want to make your heart smile. We don't want to make you angry. We don't want to make you upset. We, like, don't want to be having everyone with their own opinions of what's going on. But, God, we want to know you. So, God, I pray for those, and and even me, come into my heart. Come into our lives. Make it home. Make it the place where you reside in our lives, God, so that we might know the grace of God everlasting to everlasting. But God, I'm praying, God, that you give us strength. Life is not easy. And there are a lot of unexpecteds. But with you, we're able. Because you're able. You can do all things. The highs and the lows. The neckies and the base. The rich and the poor. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. So God, I'm praying right now, God, that if someone don't haven't fell off the fell off and they doing their own thing and they drifting, God, that you call their name to bring them back. God, I'm praying right now, God, for our loved ones that we have drifted away. That you call their name and bring them back. We know that you're able to do it. And God, we okay with your time. Whatever you got to put them through, God, to bring glory, do it, God. Because, God, we know, God, you can bring them to a way that they can be sitting at the table, not looking like what they've been through. You're a good God. You're a gracious God. You are the restorer of those who pursue you. You restore things. Just like, just like you restore our pastor's son and eyes. You restore things that sometimes people just think is gone. You say, no, no, no. I could change it in one day or one service. <laughs> I don't know about God. You're a great God. So if you can do that in one day, what else can you do? Keep us from not pouting and complaining and murmuring, and especially don't let us do it around unbelievers. But God, let us always be standing in a place of love and mercy. So God, I'm going to pray honestly here, God, God, we really don't want to understand it. <laughs> but if we have to do it, nevertheless, not our will, but your will be. Keep us holy. Keep us kind. Until we meet again. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to just open up the altar that if anybody wants to know this love, want to be part of this crew with Jesus carrying around from town to town, um, join it. I'm not, like Jesus is the greatest friend you could ever have. He's the greatest. Amen. He's the greatest king. He's the greatest l- l- lover that you ever have. <laughs> um, but I, I wanted to open the altar that, that God is able to do whatever thing. So whatever you, you're praying about, don't get discouraged. It might not happen like you think it's going to happen, but it's going to happen how God designed it to happen for his glory. So God bless you, and I hope to see you guys. No, Pastor Sonny preaching next week, uh, but I'll see you guys on Easter. God bless you.